In this video, we're going to take a look at the interface enhancements to Autodesk Inventor 2012. First off, we'll spend a little bit of time talking about the new marking menu inside of the software. This replaces the traditional right-click interface that you are accustomed to. So here I just right-click and you'll get a nice little radial menu with some commonly used commands we have inside the assembly environment. As you mouse your, your uh, cursor around these, you can select them, or you can also click back in the middle to cancel the marking menu. You also have your traditional right-click options as well, a little bit further down, but here we have some nice quick triggers to get to them. Now, pay attention to where constraint, parameters, place component, pay attention to where those commands are sitting, because if I right-click my mouse really fast and drag it in a certain direction, it will launch that command without actually even bringing up the entire marking menu. This is something called a mouse gesture. It makes our command usage here a little bit faster. Now this will take you a little bit of time to get used to, but once you've been accustomed to this type of marking menu, it becomes very, very easy to use and very fast for your workflow. But let's say I want to customize that because I don't like the uh, way it comes out of the box. So I can go to my tools, customize, and hit on marking menu. I'll find a command I want to change, this move component. I don't use it that often. Instead, I'd rather have that new assemble tool that came in 2011. So let's go ahead and add that to it. I'll go ahead and find it in the list, click on it, and it will replace my traditional move component there. You can also use import and export to have an XML file to load these customization settings in. And I'll also mention that those are linked to the application options as well. So it's a lot easier for an administrator to set up a standard uh, uh, interface for their inventor user group. Next up we'll take a look at launching a new part here. Now the part launch has become a little bit faster. You can see how fast it was just to get into a new part. Um, it's not really that noticeable unless you do it a lot, which I'm sure a lot of you do. And you can see, also see that the marking menu here has also been uh, pro proliferated throughout the software. So it's also here. And I'm going to use some dynamic input here, which is, again, not really new to 2012, but I like to show it. So this is something I added in 2011. Again, as you input the values, you can tab and then hit enter as well to lock in your values and it'll put your dimensions on for you. It's a very handy way to do this. And you'll notice I haven't really gone to the ribbons, uh, ribbon up top at all. I've been actually just using the mouse gestures and the marking menu uh, to sketch what I have here out. Now, if you are still a diehard user of the old classic interface, uh, there used to be a switch in the application options to change it back to classic. That is now gone. So the ribbon interface is here. It uh, no longer allows you to switch back to the old classic way of looking at Inventor, which is um, at this point about three years old now. So. At this point, we're just uh, using the standard ribbon now, and these marking menus have really helped us uh, uh, with our productivity. So you can see the mini toolbar for extrude hasn't really changed that much. Um, there's some new options, though, where you can do an auto fade like I'm doing here, or you can also pin it to a certain uh, location on screen so it doesn't float all over the screen. They also added the only option that was missing from last year, which was the surface output. So I'm going to do an asymmetric. You, here I can see you can switch back between solid and surface. That was missing last year. So they cleaned that up a little bit, a little bit better, made the toolbar usage a little bit nicer to use. And this has also been highly updated in some of the other tools, such as Fillet, uh, Face Draft, because Face Draft actually got some nice improvements, and uh, Chamfer as well. So this mini toolbar here is actually pretty pretty common in the software. And it also, unlike last year, this, uh, this will now also automatically um, hide your standard dialog box because it's really not needed. It just takes up space. So you'll find that uh, that will automatically be hidden with extrude, revolve, hole, uh, face draft, fillet, and chamfer. So here we'll go ahead and start another fillet quick. As you can see, the enhancements in that dial in that dialog box down there, or the uh, mini toolbar box, has been enhanced rather nicely. We got some additional options, so we can do our variable 
fillets. We can do our full face or full round fillets as well inside of here. You can define setbacks. You can go from G1 or G2 um, curvature continuous. We can also add the uh, variable here. This is really nice. Where you can actually pick your multiple points, take your arrows, and drag the individual radiuses on those. Now I'll go back to the first point I did here. So I'll just change this back to point one. Go back to my arrow, and then I can adjust that freely. You can see I'm getting a nice little real time error checking there as well. And I can also change this over to uh, G2 as well from inside of here. G2 actually was not available in the uh, previous version for a variable fillet. So next up, let's take a look at uh, some enhancements for the uh, visualization. So this is going to affect realistic, and it's also going to affect the monochromatic style. When I switch over to it, I get ray tracing. Yes, this is from Autodesk Showcase. So this is taking the rendering engine from there, implementing it over here to the realistic and monochromatic styles. I can switch back and forth between different qualities of ray tracing, so best, good, and interactive. Um, the good and the best, you know, I really wouldn't ever switch to those unless I was going to take a still shot. The interactive really makes it a little bit faster, so it knows I'm working around inside the model. You can also disable it and pause it from here as well. Now, as you move around with ray tracing turned on, it will look mildly pixelated at first. And this is actually the same way Showcase operates for you Showcase users out there. But you can see it updates really nicely. And with the interactive turned on, it goes pretty fast. So here I'll switch to monochromatic. You can also see it's really, really nice sharp image there. I'm going to go ahead and disable my ray tracing. And I'll show you where to turn this back on if need be. Because not everybody here will be able to perform uh, ray tracing depending on your specs. There's actually a little button up here inside of the view tab on the appearance panel. We can turn that button on and off, turn ray tracing on and off. If you find your system can't quite handle this just yet because you're working on a little bit older machine, there is a application option to turn that on and off as well. Uh, perhaps the best thing about this though is it is multi-core supported. So even better. So what that means for those of you with multiple cores is the ray tracing actually will process over multiple CPUs at once and not just the single CPU. The last thing we'll look at here is the select other enhancement where if you let your cursor sit on an object for a certain period of time you'll get a little pop-up box. So here you can see if you let your cursor sit you can actually get a little bit more information like the name of the component or if it's a part the name of the feature. You can cycle through with your mouse wheel or you can also green checkbox it as well. So also a nice enhancement for a select other.